price controls. One of the most dangerous economic ideas is back in fashion to bring us shortages, mass starvation, long lines, and black markets. In this video, I'll analyze the effect of price controls. As the price of everything, including food, has increased rapidly in the last few years, the idea of price controls is being resurrected for this election cycle. Kamala Harris has just promised to pass a federal ban on price gouging, or as she calls it, price gauging. And I will work to pass the first ever federal ban on pr price gauging on food. Uh, price controls are, of course, packaged as a way to assist the little guy. And they're typically passed by based on the votes from the little guy. And those same people are the ones that are hurt by it. Uh, you know who else have tried it? Venezuela. And it led to mass starvation and people eating out of garbage. A young Venezuelan boy is captured eating garbage on local news near the Colombian border. Experts say 95% of Venezuela's population is caught in the grip of this kind of crushing poverty. So it's but why? And uh, basic economics explains why. And uh, this is apparently a subject that most politicians fail at. So let's take a look. This is probably one of the most important lessons from the whole um, field of economics that everyone has to know because of a lot of the problems are caused by improper understanding of economics, the most important of which is the pricing mechanism. All right, to understand what happens under price control, let's, uh, th let's imagine a demand and supply curve. This is demand, this is supply. Um, and we have price on the x-axis and quantity on the y-axis. So what this chart is showing is demand is a function of price. Essentially, as price increases from 0 to 10 in this example, demand goes down. And But at the same time, as price increases, more producers are incentivized to produce, so supply goes up. At some point, supply and demand meet each other, and that's the happy place. That's where the market reaches equilibrium. So I made the, I made a quick animation to demonstrate this. Okay, so let's say we begin market action at the price of zero. You know, imagine a product is just being introduced. And at the beginning, we don't know what price uh, is appropriate. So let's begin at zero, right? At zero, there, there's very little uh, production uh, incentive. So you see that supply is at 20, a very low number. But because the price is so low, demand is very high. It's at 100. So uh, we have 100 units of demand, only two, 20 units of supply. So we have a huge 80 unit shortage. So clearly this economy doesn't work. And this, this price doesn't work. Um, so uh, we begin with a very low price. You see the huge gap um, between supply and demand. So this means um, 80 people out of the 100 will not be able to get the product they want. Okay, so and they would be willing to pay up uh, to incentivize some more production. So the producers will see the situation, will see the shortage and raise the price from uh, one to two to three to four. And as that happens, uh, the, the demand comes down and supply goes up, but we are still in a place where there's too much demand and too little supply. And as, as the market, um, uh, market search for proper pricing continues, um, different producers try different prices until the market reaches consensus on one price that um, produces enough products to satisfy demand. So some of the demand is suppressed, some of the supply is uh, encouraged, and they reach a, a, an equilibrium point at four. Now, this is uh, the process of price formation in a free market. If uh, someone like Kamala comes out and says, uh, this price of four is too high, we don't like it, um, what if we kind of mandate this to be instead of four, let's mandate it to be three. Our consumers can't afford the price of four and this is too high and uh, let's uh, mandate a lower price of three. Let's see what happens. We restart the price discovery process. Again, as you can see in the beginning, we have a high demand and low supply. And as the market moves, uh, price reaches this point, price of three. 
and it can't move beyond that. And we are stuck at a place where shortage is permanent. There is no way for the market to incentivize more production. And because the product is underpriced, there's too much demand. Shortage means uh, frustration and long lines. And these consumers that can't get the product would have to go through um, black market to get it and still pay up higher prices and lower quality. And these and a lot of these suppliers go bankrupt, lay off workers, and a lot of negative things happen out of that. So uh, price controls are one of the most dangerous things a politician can propose. That's why many of the government services that you want to use, they, they have huge lines and very low quality and the consumer has no ability to influence them and no power to demand better quality. That's why in Canada, healthcare waits are eight or nine months for uh, critical procedures. That's why people are starving in Venezuela. Uh, and uh, this is an idea that has been tried for thousands of years and has produced the exact same result every time. For some reason, we don't learn from our mistakes and repeat the same disastrous policy over and over again. I hope you liked it. See you in the next video.